Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist and all-around snappy dresser, DT, from WXRisk.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather, and boy, do I have a lot to talk about. Oh my gosh. So much going on here. Let's get right to it. First, a picture of uh, my smiling face here from Richmond, Virginia. And if you want to reach me, I have two emails, Verizon and, of course, uh, the Gmail. And you do also want to do uh, the, uh, if you want to follow me on my Twitter account here for operational weather, it's that one. I also have another Twitter account, which is uh, Weather Risk, uh, but uh, that's, um, of course, for grain forecasting, what have you. So there you go. All right. First, to take a look here. This is the overall hemispheric pattern as of uh, Sunday at midday here. November 11th. What we have is a four-wave pattern. You can clearly see that. Uh, we have four distinct troughs here, very nicely shown. Um, you know, there's one trough here, there's the other one here, the other one is here, and the other one's down this way. So very stable pattern. And of course, you also have this block over Scandinavia, which is going to be a fe feature. We'll talk about that a little later. So it's a four-wave pattern. It's a very active pattern, and it's that's going to continue. If we look at our teleconnections here, we see that the PNA is uh, going down in this direction here. We can see the NEO, which is neutral, is beginning to drop a little bit. Uh, the Western Pacific Oscillation, which really doesn't matter that much to us, is close to neutral. And the EPO, which is negative, goes to neutral towards the end. So we'll see what that means in just a second. Here we have the Arctic Oscillation. I'm using the one from Weather Bell, and you can see that right now um, it's negative, and then it goes to neutral a little bit, and then it drops to negative again, and it stays negative for a while into the end of uh, almost the end of the month and that would be significant because that would mean that any warm-up we were to see uh, after the November uh, 18th or 20th would be short-lived okay so um, now I wanted to go over this briefly when I do more snowstorm videos and other uh, synoptic videos I'll be I'll be showing this from time to time but the idealized teleconnections set up for the East Coast snowstorm now this image here on my on the right side shows you what the, what we're talking about here so um, this here is your Eastern Pacific Oscillation, the EPO. This here is the Arctic Oscillation. This here is the PNA, Pacific North America, and the NEO. Now, each one of these each one of these features can be either neutral, okay, each one, or they can be positive, or sometimes even very positive, and then of course they can be negative or very negative. So this is the idealized set up for these teleconnections. Remember what teleconnections are. They are jet stream patterns or configurations which enable the storms to develop or the low pressure areas to develop and take certain tracks. So uh, this is how we can see you know winter storms, weather patterns coming up several days ahead of time by focusing on these teleconnections. So the idealized one here is like I said the negative EPO positive PNA, negative Arctic Oscillation, negative NEO. That's ideal. Now you can get snowstorms if some of these are neutral, but this is the ideal textbook case, okay? If you were learning about this for the first time, this is what you'd be learning about. So, and obviously this causes some confusion because people don't know exactly what they mean. So you can take a look at this and refer to this again and again if you want to in the video. And I'll be posting this probably on the website on the Facebook page in the future. So the negative EPO which is this feature here. When that is the feature, it's, that refers to the ridge over Western North America becoming extended, not just from Western Canada, but into Alaska and then into the Arctic region, where you establish a cross-polar flow, also known as the Siberian Express. When the EPO is negative, when it's negative, you get the cross-polar flow, which leads to big Arctic outbreaks coming southward. Now, the positive PNA, that refers to the West, West Coast Ridge. And this could be a typical ridge on the West Coast. Now, that, that brings in some cold air, but the other thing it does is it helps keeps the trough over the eastern United States. So low pressure areas develop here, and you end up having possible winter storms on the East Coast or the Appalachian Mountains or the Ohio Valley, what have you. So that's what the positive PNA does. Now, the negative Arctic Oscillation, the AO, that over here in the Arctic region, but this, when this is negative, what it does is it allows the Arctic and the polar jets to come southward. So you end up getting 
more phasing between the subtropical jet and the Arctic jet or the subtropical jet and the polar jet. And this allows the winter storms to become bigger. When the Arctic jet and the polar jet is stuck around up here, you have fairly innocuous weather patterns. So when the Arctic oscillations are positive, the Arctic jets stay up here and you don't get any phasing. So that's why that's important. So the phasing brings in the cold air and allows the, the big storms to develop. And finally, we have the negative NAO, the North American Oscillation, which is over here. And that refers to northeastern Canada and Greenland. Now, when this is negative, what happens is low pressure areas here have to stay south because this is a blocking feature here. This is a ridge in the jet stream, which forces the low pressure area to stay south. Now, when the NAO is positive, it means you have low pressure here and at the mid levels and upper levels of the atmosphere in Greenland. That means you often have a ridge here and the low pressure areas track up into the Midwest or the Appalachian Mountains. See? So that's why having a negative NAO over North America, over Baffin Island, Northeastern Canada, Greenland is good for winter storms. Okay, there you go. Nice lesson. Lesson learned. Now this is the current MJO, which we can see right here, the Maddie and Julian Oscillation. It is now phase four, as you can see as of this date. In the month of November, when you have an El Nino and the MJO is in phase four, you get this pattern. Now notice what this means. This is important here. So let me take a look at it for a second. Obviously, we have a negative anomaly here over southeastern uh, Canada, south of Greenland. We have a bit of a ridge here. You can see that and a ridge here. So the jet seems like this, but it's doing this. Okay. This is not an idealized pattern for an East Coast snowstorm. Um, the EPO is negative, so that's good. The PNA is positive, that's good. But the Arctic Oscillation is neutral, and so is the NAO. If anything, you also have this big anomaly here, which could make the NAO positive. But so again, we have the trough here over the Midwest, not on the East Coast, so it's not a great setup. So that doesn't mean nothing's going to happen. It's just not ideal. Okay. Now this is the current pattern as of Sunday midday here, and you can see there's our short wave which is going to develop the storm and we have two distinct jet streams so you can follow this here we have our ridge okay that's the symbol for ridge so there's the southern jet stream and here's the arctic jet stream see that there we go and the reason why we have that is because the arctic oscillation is going negative as you can see it is right now so the jet stream was able to function let me pull up so you can see it so the jet streams are split and because they're split we end up getting that and now you're on, off to the races with possible storms. Okay, so this is now Monday night, Tuesday morning, 1 a.m. Tuesday morning. Now the southern short wave is right here. You can see a big system here, and then another one right here. So there's our ridge coming like this way. But as you can see, we also have a ridge here. Oops, a ridge here. You can see that ridge. So the low pressure area, because we don't have a negative NEO, is going to track like this oops, as you can see right here, and going to track up this way. And we'll see that in just a second. Now, this is the current radar map as of Sunday night. And you can see the significant snow in Texas Panhandle, Kansas, rain in Missouri, rain in southeastern Kansas, and storms to the south. So this thing is definitely developing. And here's our current map. You can see it. And there's the low pressure area. That's going to be the concern here for the one from Monday night and Tuesday. We have high pressure on the east coast, the one that brought the very cold day today on the East Coast with temperatures more like early or mid-December than November. Now, here we go. This is the F3 GFS, which is a pretty good model, turning out to be a much improvement over the GFS. There's no doubt about that. And you can see uh, we get the high pressure is here, Arctic, and this is our low pressure area right here. Now, this is valid uh, 1 a.m. on Tuesday morning. And there's the low right here. There's the first current high. So this high is moving off the coast. We're getting south winds here. And this is all rain, even into the Pennsylvania-New York border. Now, once the low on Monday, this is uh, Monday 1 p.m. This is Tuesday 1 p.m. down here, 1 p.m. on Tuesday. The low is right there. See it? There's the low. It's, very, it's over the uh, coastal Connecticut over Rhode Island. And the rain snow line is way to the north. So this is not really a snow threat at all. So... Um, I just want to point that out to you. Okay, and if we look at this enlarged, this is the new. This is the Canadian. Uh, the early, the new Canadian came in just this, or a few minutes ago, and you can see the low pressure area is very nice here. One high is here, but it's moving off the coast, so you're getting south winds, which drives the rain snow line way to the north. If we look at the new Nam, we can see here 
this is I believe the um, yeah the Sunday midday NAM at 12 Z you can see the rain um, this is uh, four o'clock and three o'clock on Monday the rain is already in New Richmond uh, approaching Charlottesville it's already in Roanoke and Lynchburg Norfolk most of North Carolina Tennessee and then the rains up here this is uh, by um, uh, early Tuesday morning you can see around 3 4 a.m. and then um, <clears throat> excuse me uh, beyond that as we go to, uh, this is now Tuesday and we have Tuesday at um, early morning around uh, that's 5 6 a.m. you can see the lowest pressure area is uh, just about uh, right about here and notice the rain snow lines way up in the mountains so up in here like this and then at uh, the low just falls apart kind of and the rain snow line stays way to the north so yeah new york state maybe northwest pennsylvania you see some snow upstate vermont new, new hampshire not at all unusual for the middle of november if you look at rainfall precipitation we can see it very nicely here uh, this is the european 12 z sunday afternoon european most of the significant rain down here and then a little bit up this way it's kind of a gap here in new york and, and philly uh, new jersey that sort of thing and this is, um, uh, yeah, is it the same? Yeah, it is. And this is, uh, this is the NAM, uh, the next 60 hours. And uh, this is, I uh, believe this just came out fairly recently. Yeah. So you can see clearly this is the new NAM. It's got the heaviest precipitation up to D.C., Baltimore. Uh, so very good rain along this line southward, you can see. And then um, up through here, not nearly as much up in New England as some of the other models. If we look at the year, this is the European here, the 12Z European from Sunday, just to show you how it develops here. Notice this is, this is the 32 degree line, temperatures are 32 degrees, and this is the, that's the snow line here, and this is the 32 degree line. So anything north of this could be snow, but it's not. You can see what happens by a Tuesday morning, the low is on the coast, which is not a good sign for snowstorms. Look at that, right over the Delmarva or the Chesapeake Bay, and the rain snow line is way up here to the north. And the 32 degree lines are even further north than that. So, uh, again, look at the south winds here. See the south winds coming up? So it just drives everything rapidly northward. So this one is not going to be that big of a deal. And then, as you can see, the low on uh, Tuesday afternoon, 1 p.m., is right um, here. And then it's here. And look, at the, it's way up to the north like this. It's almost up over Montreal. So this is not a big deal. Now, if you look at the rain snow uh, forecast here, um, you can clearly see this is the one from uh, uh, Euro weather or F5 weather now. You can clearly see that. Um, F5 weather, you can look them up. And notice it's got only the big snows here. The yellow is six inches. Oh, mountains, Adirondacks, and then everything north of the, almost on the U.S. Vermont border with Canada there. But if you look at the one at Weather Bell, which is unfortunate, they like to use, they measure sleet as all snow. And you can see it's got much heavier snow much further south you know down in here and in here and much you know, six eight inches up in this way and all this as well notice you see that but if you look over here not the same thing you don't see the same thing so it's just because it measures snow and as sleet as and, and freezing rain as, as snow which is unfortunate i was talking about november 15 and 16 for a second this is going to be a much bigger system it has much more of a bigger impact so let's take a look at it now this is the european model from last thursday okay so this is from Thursday. You can see, uh, actually, I actually don't have the time I'm on, but this was the Thursday European model. I mentioned it over on the uh, newsletter and on the Facebook page So uh, that the European was showing this sort of situation. So then the European took it away. Um, this is in detail. You can see it actually had some significant snow and ice in the Shenandoah Valley, West Virginia, Western Maryland. You can see that sort of thing. Um, but like I said, then it kind of took it away. Now the models starting on Sunday started bringing it back Sunday morning. So this is the, um, the Sunday afternoon European model, valid for 84 hours. And uh, the feature here I want to point out is this one right here. See the arrow? Okay, this upper low here, that's known as the 50-50 low. That's because it is um, located at 50 degrees longitude west and 50 degrees north latitude. It's also known as the MF, the NF, which is or Newfoundland low. Now, what this does is you see the southern piece of energy here? This cannot go up into Chicago. Because this feature is here, it has to go around it. You see that? It has to go around it. And as a result, you have a more southern track. So a 50-50 low is always a good sign for snowstorms as well. The problem is also on this map here, we don't have a ridge. 
this is all sale this is all zonal there's no ridge here in Western Canada at all so that's a problem as well all right now as we follow the pattern through this takes us to 126 hours which is you know when the storm is already uh, underway on the East Coast the second storm now if you notice um, of course we still have our 50 50 low which is right here but we also have a ridge on the West Coast a little bit so you're getting some cold air coming in this way and as a result uh, the, it, it's, the rain is more likely to change the snow in this one, especially on the back side. So let's take a look at this. Now, this is the early morning. Uh, this is the 0 Z uh, Sunday morning European. So we have the high pressure areas here, as you can see it. Let me change my marker color here so you can see this a little better. There you go. And there's our upper low, and there's the low developing in the Gulf. So the, we have the cold air being funneled in this way with the strong north winds. Now, um, next, this shows us uh, uh, the uh, Thursday night. Again, this is the Sunday morning European, so we're still dealing with Sunday morning. All right, this is the um, 0Z Sunday 11-11 um, run of the European. So here's the high. Now, see the high sliding off the coast? And there's the coastal low developing. There's the upper low supporting it. So, and we're getting east wind here. And then eventually, as you can see, this is the European ensemble here. This is the EPS. Which supports it. It has a low here and the high is here. So these two things match. This is a good agreement. We like that. It gives us confidence in the forecast. And then um, uh, by 132 hours out, again, this was the 0Z uh, European. Actually, this is the 12Z European. You can see the low is now here over Cape Cod. Oops. You can see the low is right here. Okay. And the rain snow line is like this. So this is all snow in New York State, northern Vermont, Maine, that sort of thing. So that's fairly impressive. And then, um, again, this was uh, the 0Z run. You can see it also is in that air general area, Cape Cod, southeastern New York. And um, uh, there's a big, we have a lot of cold air coming in behind it, behind the systems, no doubt about that. Um, and now if we take a look, this is the 12Z European, and, and there's a little subtle change here. So this is the 12Z, okay, Sunday, November 11th European. So here is the low here. There's the high over New Hampshire, keeping the cold air in place. There's a lot of cold air damming in here, and there's the upper level low. Now look where the low is. The low is right on the Delmarva coast. If this was January, this would still be snow going over to rain. It'd be a lot of ice inland, but on the coast for I-95, this would all be snow going over to rain. The winds here are all southeasterly. You see that? All southeasterly. The high is now way off the coast. So you're getting southeast winds. Now the mountains and the valleys, this is all still snow and ice if this is midwinter. And may in fact even still be snow and ice. We'll get to that in a second. This is the European Ensemble from Sunday afternoon. And you can see there's strong agreement here of a significant area of low pressure in that general area for th Thursday night, Friday morning. Now, this is the GFS. Uh, this is the sun. This is Sunday's. Uh, this is the F3, FV3. Let me call it up here. This is the FV3. This is the new GFS. We like this a lot. And this is the Sunday run. 12Z run. And you can see, look where the low is here. Now here the F is way off the coast. You notice only a little bit of precip here. So for some reason this run of the FV3 GFS did not have it. But the um, 18Z run is totally different. Let's take a look at that. 12Z, 18Z. 12Z, 18Z. There you go. Now this is Wednesday night. Actually early Thursday morning. Excuse me. This is early Thursday morning. Now you see the pink stuff in here? That's ice in the Shenandoah Valley. Virginia Piedmont, that sort of thing. Now, here's the high. You can see that. And the low pressure area is developing nicely right here. And this may be that tropical system as well. So that's another complication to worry about. Now, look at this in more detail. This is the FV3, GFS, the new one. And you can see valid again, 1 a.m. on Thursday morning. 1 a.m. on Thursday. Okay. There's the high. Keeping the cold air in place, still getting north wind. And there, look at the ice building in the Shenandoah Valley. And perhaps the Virginia Piedmont as well. Up into western Maryland. Now, this is uh, 1 o'clock on Thursday. And northwest Virginia is getting a hell of an ice storm, according to this. Look where the low is. The low is here over Norfolk. Okay. The high is still here. Not here here in Maine and if that's true you're still getting a northeast wind which keeps the wedge in place 
So DC's all rain, Philadelphia's rain, Baltimore's rain, but uh, Harrisonburg, ice storm, uh, Western Maryland, Hagerstown, Altoona, Johnstown, yeah, it could be an ice event there, no doubt about that. So that's very interesting and very damaging. Now what happens is the 18Z FVGFS, look where the low goes. You remember before the model data showed that the system was going to be, um, you know, on the coast? No. The, 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 the 18Z says that's not going to be the case. So as you can see, the low goes off the coast here. And then um, this is uh, 1 o'clock on Thursday. And with the low moving off the coast here, okay, and the high still in Maine, the winds begin to turn north, and then we now go over to snow in these areas instead of ice. Now, most of Virginia and Maryland, as you can see, is all rain still, but that snow line is, is along the Maryland border. And then what, kind of what it does is it pushes the snow back in the northwest Virginia, western Maryland. And look where the low is, off the coast. Now, the problem here is that the high is now gone, and you're still getting an east wind. See this? This is east wind. When you, This is November. Your water temperatures are still too warm. Now, this is January, February, and when it's colder out, you have different situation. But here you're getting east wind. The water temperatures are just too warm in this area. And it's going to go over. It's going to be all rain. So don't worry. If you're I-95, this is all rain. But inland in the mountains, this is a different matter. All right, now this is the 0Z, 12Z models. For, we just can take a look at them briefly. This is the, F, this is the GFS. Uh, the upper left is 1 o'clock Thursday morning. And we can see, all right, this is uh, 1 a.m. on Thursday. Bit of ice still up in here. Here's our high over Vermont. Now, this is Thursday morning. This is now 7 a.m. There's the high. Okay, and look at the ice here, right in here. Developing very nicely. A lot of rain in central and eastern Virginia, the Delmarva, North Carolina, but Shenandoah Valley in the western Maryland, still still looking pretty ominous. And then here, um, this is now, uh, this is the, uh, the um, 1 o'clock on Thursday on the GFS. This is uh, 1 p.m. Thursday up here. And this is um, 7 p.m. on Thursday. Now you can see the ice halfway into the valley again like that. This is very similar. The low is here and the low moves off the coast. That's fine. Okay. And we have mixed precipitation in the interior. Snow and ice in that area. <clears throat> so it's, it looks, you know, for an early, for the first big northeast storm of the season where you're going to have winter precipitation outside of mountains of New York and northern New England this looks like a pretty decent event and this is the Canadian now notice where the Canadian has the low this is important the Canadian's got the low here over DC and I look where the rain all the precip is way inland there's nothing in the Shenandoah Valley so if that's right it comes inland that changes everything okay now this here is Next, we'll take a look at the FV3 GFS. Yay! The new GFS and see what it's doing. And again, it's got the, um, this is Wednesday, 7 p.m. You see the ice in the southwest area. And then thir well, when, this is Thursday, 1 a.m. Really good, significant ice in the entire Shenandoah Valley from Roanoke all the way up into Leesburg and Winchester. Uh, I, that's uh, on the 7 a.m. Thursday. And then we continue looking at the new FV3 GFS. And notice here, look what it does. Uh-oh, uh-oh. The low is here, and then it goes off the coast. And uh, 7 p.m. on Thursday, 7 a.m. Thursday morning, 7 a.m. on Thursday, the new FV3 GFS has snow in northwest Virginia and western Maryland and Hagerstown and Altoona. And then it comes in this way, like this. And it continues on Thursday through 1 o'clock in the afternoon because the low is moving off the coast. Again, rain on the coast in a lot of areas, but uh, it's pretty darn impressive. And, and it goes off the coast, you can see here, and you can see the snow continuing. Now, this is the FV3 GFS model. Now remember, this model is relatively new, and there's a lot to be uh, figured out here with this thing. So this is relatively new. This is the new version of the GFS. So it's a lot of hope that the model will not go crazy with the snowstorms. And the snow amounts. The problem is that it kind of does. I mean, look at this. This is the total snowfall for both events for uh, November 16th. Look at this crap. 
I'm sorry, folks. This is bullshit. There's not going to be 11 inches of snow in Richmond, Virginia. There's not going to be 15, 18 inches of snow in Lexington and Roanoke and Harrisonburg. This is bullshit. Okay? First of all, it's 10 to 1 snow ratio. We're not going to, we would not see that. Uh, and second, it assumes, again, um, you know, sleet as snow, freezing rain as snow. This is just nonsense. It's just way overdone. Okay? There could be areas of significant snow with several inches in the Shenandoah Valley and mountains of eastern portions of West Virginia, Western Maryland. But you're not going to see 10 inches in, in northern Virginia. It's just not going to happen. <sighs> I wish they'd get the model fixed, but I guess not. All right, let's go on beyond this now. This here is what happens 180 hours out. This is November 19th. So we have a pretty strong cold pattern still continuing here. Uh, notice the flow is like this, a bit of a ridge on the west coast. So a lot of cold air coming in here for a while after the storm. But we can even see that on the European. Um, you know, we go beyond that, we can see the cold air coming southward after the storm. Here's the high right here, and this here is our strong cold front. Look at the north winds, it's bringing the cold air in next weekend. So next weekend is going to be really cold again. Just sort of point that out to you. But it does not last. <clears throat> this is now the pattern looking uh, into Thanksgiving week. This is third Wednesday, November 21st, the day before Thanksgiving. Notice everything has gone zonal. It's a trough here on the west coast. Everything is zonal, so it's nice and mild, and a big trough here uh, coming out of Thanksgiving weekend on the Midwest. So it's a ridge over the eastern United States, so that's a fairly mild pattern. The other point I want to point out is this thing here. Uh, Michael Ventress pointed out that there's a huge block in Scandinavia uh, over the next developing um, on the European model, all the models for that matter. And the argument is that the block moves, uh, retrogrades and during the winter months from Scandinavia to Greenland and sets up a negative NEO, and that's true. This here is the European model. And you can see that um, what it does is day 5 to 10. This here is the feature we're talking about, this thing right here. And it stays there, as you can see right there. Very impressive looking system. Now, the, the concern is what happens during the winter months is that the Scandinavia block moves to Iceland, and then it goes to Greenland, and now you have a negative NEO, and the winter goes kablooey, and you have all sorts of big winter storms over the eastern United States. This block has been around here a long time. And if you go back, I actually made that comment here. You can see it. I told Mike, reminded him, that it's been around there for a long time. Let me show you what I mean. This is back in uh, July. We can see the huge block right here. And then um, it did a lot of damage to, uh, you can see, this is now August. And you can see the block is still in place um, right here or Western Europe. And did a lot of damage. This is a crop stress map. You can see um, this purple stuff down here represents... Uh, severe stress for the crop and you can see most of Europe you know drought which they had last summer was in pretty bad shape because of the blocking pattern all, uh, all the rain was going this way in this direction excuse me and that's why it's all wet here because all the storms are tracking underneath the block the block was here and all the storms are going underneath it so green so Balkans had great rains the Ukraine had great rains Western Russia had good rains Spain had good rains in Italy but everybody else was very very dry and you can see this is the 90 days going back, you know, from mid to August. I look how dry it has been rainfall relative to normal. Because when you have a huge block here like this, you get no rain. The weather systems come in and they get and they get diverted. You can't go this way, you have to go this way, what have you. Because of this blocking feature right in here. And you can see this even more so. This is August. Look at the rainfall anomalies in August. And this is October for the whole month. You can see how dry it was in Europe. So anyway, it looks like the block is coming, and uh, we'll see what that does during the winter, but that's another positive sign for the winter. <sighs> I know this is a long one, but like I said, two big coastal storms in one week. What are you going to do? This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page.